So now we know about the kind of effects there are, also limit breaks, which is the conditions for other effects. How do you actually make use of these effects? Well, Vanguard cards usually have these things that show you, like there's this V with a thing coming out into it, or there's this thing that shows you, actually this is a terrible example, my bad, where the heck is it, ah, this one, there's this thing that shows a three with a thing going down, well, these are your kinds of ways of activating effects. And they are covered on page seven of the rule book. I'm going to be using this because I don't have all the cards that make use of these. So first one, counterblast, and this is the most common way of activating effects and paying for them. Counterblast is taking cards that are in your damage zone that are face up and flipping them face down. So, given my top idle Pacifica's effect, it's saying counterblast three to do this. That means you have to have three face up damage, and you have to flip them face down. And some units have high counterblasts, but really good effects, and other units have low counterblasts, but meh effects. And managing your counterblasts is one of the important things in Vanguard, because if you burn up your counterblasts too quickly, then you can't make use of your amazing boss monster effects. Soul Blast and Soul Charge make use of cards that you have stacked underneath your Vanguard. As I mentioned before, putting a card into the soul is done through some effects, and the soul is basically exceeds materials or attached energy cards. And Soul Blast is basically the equivalent of detaching Exceeds Material, to sending energies from a Pokemon to the discard pile, blah, 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 blah. A Soul Blast of, say, two means taking two cards from the Soul and putting them into your drop zone, i.e. the graveyard. And if you're Soul Charging two, then that means you're taking the top two cards of your deck and putting them in there. And some clans are just based entirely around that. Dark Irregulars, Pale Moons, and in some cases, Oracle Think Tank. One other note is there's a certain kind of unit that is referred to as the Mega Blast, and it requires you to have eight cards in soul to get rid of, and five face-up damage. These kind of units are never really good, so if you ever see something with Soul Blast 8, Counter Blast 5, take it with a grain of salt, as they're not really the best. Another kind of cost pain and I mentioned this briefly, is referred to as the Persona Blast. This is a unique ability for some units, and a Persona Blast is you discard a card with the same name as this monster in your hand, then activate its ability. Dragonic Overlord the End is by far the best example, as if you have a Dragonic Overlord the End in your hand, you can discard it alongside the Counter Blast in order to stand up Dragonic Overlord the End and attack again. Now that we've got all those cost things out of the way, I want to get into the next kind of symbols. First off, standing and resting. Standing and resting is basically this. A unit that is standing can attack. Once you've rest them, i.e. after you've attacked them or you've rest them for an effect, as there are cards that just automatically make you have rested units, a unit that's already resting can attack. And they can't be stood back up unless there's kind of some way of doing it. What is through the stand trigger? It's telling you you can... Um, I'll get into triggers again in a later video, but some units do have self-stand abilities. There aren't too many of them right now, but give it a couple months and we'll have one really good unit that can stand back up alongside Dragonic Overlord at the end, who self-stands him back up by discarding a card with his name, uh, Dragonic Overlord at the end, from your hand alongside appropriate counter blasts. So that's standing and guarding, I mean standing and resting. The critical... This symbol here, which is right next to the unit's power, is saying how much damage you'll do to your opponent if the attack successfully hits. So, this unit, with a critical of 1, will deal 1 damage to your opponent if it hits. And damage is done by milling the top card of your deck. So, if you have a critical of 2, then you're doing 2 damage to your opponent if this hits. That's usually done through the effects of critical triggers or some kind of special ability. The shield is what is used for units that you're defending with, to negate attacks. So, say if this unit is swinging for 8,000 attack against my 6,000 Vanguard, and I have a unit of 10,000 shield in my hand, then I can put it down to add its shield to this, meaning I have a 16,000 monster now. That 8,000 is not going to hit. Just a quick note on that though, you can't shield with a unit that's a grade higher than what you have in play. So imagine if I have a grade 0 Vanguard and all I have are grade 1s in my hand. I can't use those 
to defend this grade zero from attacking. Like, I can only use grade zeros to defend this. So, just a quick note on that. Power, we've already gone over. And then there's these things, G, R, and V. G is the guardian circle. That is the special thing right here at the top of the mat. This is where you put your units that you're going to be using to block attacks with. It's very top center of the mat, pretty simple. Then you've got V and, G, v and R. They are referring to the vanguard circle and the rear guard circle. Let me try and move this up a bit. So, a vanguard mat, well this is a terrible example as it doesn't have any, actually no, it does have them. You can see behind this artwork there are these little circles here. The red one is the vanguard circle. And this is where you're van this is where you'll be doing most of your attacking from. Everything around it is the rear guard circle. So we'll put a rear guard here. We'll put a vanguard, I mean a rear guard there. And let me find another one. So there. We have a vanguard and two rear guards with a rear guard circle. So most skills or cards will have effects that say if this thing is in either V or R, apply X skill. And this is actually a really good example here. This unit is saying if it's in V and you have a limit break of 4, if it attacks, it gets 5,000 extra power. However, this thing also has a skill that applies when it's in rear. It's saying when this card attacks and you have a vanguard that is a Bermuda Triangle, you get 2,000 more attack until end of the battle. So, so basically when you're looking at a card, Check to see where its skills apply. Some cards have effects that activate vanguard only, whereas others have effects that activate, that activate rear guard only. So now that we've got all the symbols out of the way and such forth, I just want to close this out by explaining some jargon that you may be uh, wondering about. So there are a couple terms that are written down that are commonly used, but some people just may not understand, and I'll just go over them. First one, retire. Retire is basically a blanket term for tributing and sending from field to graveyard in Yu-Gi-Oh. So here's a first example. This is my board. However, I realize I now have an 11,000 Vanguard, I mean card that I want to put into play because this 9,000 monster isn't quite cutting it. I'm going to retire this, sending it to the drop zone to replace this instead. So it's basically tributing a monster to summon one of a higher level like in Yu-Gi-Oh. That's one way of doing it. Another way is just tributing your monsters to activate some kind of effect, like Phantom Blaster Dragon. You counterblast X amount, and then you tribute three Shadow Paladin units to give it 10,000 power plus an extra critical. That's one way of doing retiring. And then there's the other way, sending to the graveyard. So, suppose, for instance, I call Dragonic Death Scythe and activate his ability. Counterblast 2. Retire a card on your opponent's side of the field. I'm going to retire this card. So it's destroying or sending your monster to the graveyard. And those are your real two kinds of ways of doing retiring. So quick recap, retiring is basically tributing and destroying or sending to the graveyard, whichever one really works for you. Bind. Some cards have the ability to perform the bind action and binding is basically the equivalent of Yu-Gi-Oh's Banish. A bound unit is put out of play face down and it is either returned to your hand or to your field when certain conditions are met. Um, for instance, uh, Sealed Demon Dragon Dungaree. When you put him into Vanguard play, he'll banish the top two cards of your deck face down. Those will stay banished until you, either sh until you put them back to the bottom of your deck through his to activate his ability. And then you've also got some cards that just banish or bind a card from your hand, but until the end of the turn. Riding, as we already mentioned, is the act of riding or putting a unit on top of one of a higher level. So I have a grade 2 vanguard, I'm going to ride to grade 3. Calling is putting a unit into an open rear guard circle. So this is my vanguard, I'm going to call this to rear guard for whatever reason. I really need a 5,000 attacker. So you're going to ride that, you're going to call this, you're going to call that, you're going to call this, you're going to call this, 
call that. So that's calling. Some decks allow you to call straight from the deck. That's referred to as a superior call. Other decks allow you to actually ride units from your deck. That is a superior ride. Some decks focus on starting with a certain unit and then when you enter your draw phase or your ride phase, you look at the X amount of cards for your deck. If there's a certain unit of that name, you call it and you ride it right there, but you can't ride for uh, you can't perform your normal ride. That is referred to as a ride chain. And some decks just go one, two, three like that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The Lord, we've already gone over before, and it's right there. Lord, if you have a unit of, that's a different clan, i.e. archetype is this card, you can't attack. The Pioneer, that is something unique to grade one starters. When you ride a vanguard of the same clan on, on top of it, you can call it to rear guard. Really good unit. Sentinels. Perfect guards and special intercepts. You can only have four standing and resting, or we know about. One last thing I want to talk about is something that requires us going a bit into the future. Like, I'm thinking probably around spring 2014, and that's the lock mechanic. This is a new mechanic in Vanguard. Not a lot of people really know about this unless you, like, keep track of what's going on in the OCG, but it just came out in the form of a new trial deck in Japan in their newest booster set. Binding Force of Black Rings. And the mechanic is just basically really hardcore disruption. And it comes in two forms. Inflicting it on your opponent and doing it to yourself. The doing it to yourself isn't very common. Only a couple units actually have this skill. One of which belongs to Narakami. So obviously I took an interest in that immediately. I'm like, what the hell does this do? Oh, that's a thing. But basically, locking is the act of putting a rear guard unit face down. However, a unit that's put face down is basically null and void. It doesn't exist anymore until that player's end phase. So suppose my opponent locks my rear guard on their turn. I can't do anything with this until the end of my turn. And what I mean by I can't do anything with it is like this. A unit that's locked cannot be flipped up it cannot be boosted, it cannot stand, it cannot be attacked, it cannot be retired. So I can't even tribute my lock unit and replace it for that. I can't do anything with it until my turn ends. Then it comes back up the way it was. Standing, resting, doesn't matter. If, my, if they locked my unit while I was resting, and it comes back up like that. Even though these guys may be like that. Um, again, some units will do this themselves, Valing Sword, Dragon Reverse for instance, locks two of my units, but then it gets X amount of power and retires two of my opponent's units, combined with the Valing Sword, Dragon Break Ride, which retires an opponent's unit and gives my guy an extra 10,000 power, I'm actually going to make him like nearly 30,000 plus power while popping three of my opponent's cards in one turn. It's a pretty good combination. All I need is just a limit break of four and decent counter blasts. Huh. But... We don't have to worry about that yet. Like, this is just something that only came out a couple weeks ago in Japan. We're not going to have to deal with this until way in the future. But I just thought I would explain the lock mechanic a little bit. I'll go a little bit more into lock intricacies when we get closer to Binding Force of Black Wings release. As there, there are a couple of neat tricks, but yeah, it's just something that's highly disruptive. And you know, one deck really abuses it to just be that anti-meta type deck, because that's what they are. Link Jokers are just flat out anti-meta. But they've also got some really sick artwork, so I'm kind of interested in them. But that being said, I hope this video helped. I know it was a huge video, but there was a lot of things I wanted to get done in it. And like I said before, I didn't want to cover trigger units because they're just, they're things of themselves. They are what make Vanguard Vanguard, and they will probably be the next video I do. So thank you all for watching, and until next time, this is Obvious TGS. Jacking